Okay, 14.2, Wells and Spring. Uh, so, what we're going to do today is you're going to be able to understand and describe what an artesian formation is. Describe two land features produced when groundwater is heated um, beneath the surface, whether it be from uh, active magma or just regional metamorphism. Uh, so, let's get started. All right, so um, in Pontiac, we get our water, obviously, from uh, the Vermilion River. However, um, like myself, many people uh, in the country have to have a well that they can get their water from. And so basically what happens is um, they drill a hole into the ground. It has to go through uh, the rock, and what they're looking for is they're looking for an area that, that, that has holes in it. In other words, um, that is permeable uh, with, with air spaces so water can flow through it. And then as we do, we then pull the water out. It goes into our homes, pressurizes in a tank, and it goes to uh, our faucets or our showers or whatever. Um, when that happens, it's kind of like um, kind of like a a straw and a milkshake. When you remove the water or, or draw the water out, what happens is you get a a V uh, or a cone of depression. And what's happening is the water is is going to the least path of resistance. And so, as you pull water out of the straw or pull out of the well. In the milkshake, it's easiest to pull right around the edge of the straw, and it's the same for a well. And so it creates this V, um, this V or this cone of depression right around um, the outside of the well itself. Now, here's the deal. Um, it can actually draw it so far down that it can actually draw other people out of water, uh, cause a well to temporarily draw dry up until water can flow back into or permeate into uh, an area and so uh, a cone of depression it's the V created around the outside of a well uh, a regular spring we have water that actually comes to the ground and and it's when water goes above uh, the water table so for example our our river uh, the Vermilion River is actually uh, mostly runoff, but it is spring-fed in some areas. In other words, the water table uh, is above the ground where the river is, and so um, we see water in that area. Water can come out of the ground in the spring, and I'll show you some uh, video clips of that. Um, a perched water table is a water table that is on a uh, top of an impermeable rock layer, and basically what happens is it, it forms like a pool underground um, and a perched water table is something that uh, something that uh, can happen underneath the ground I'll show you real quick here uh, kinda what I'm talking about so again uh, here's a normal well here is the V created or the cone of depression created um, around a well as it draws up. Uh, again, as it draws up more, you see what happens is it can draw this person or this person out of water. Uh, okay, let me show you a spring. So here's a natural spring. And again, turn this down. And again, the water is just coming out of the ground here because it's rolling where the water is above the water table. And so uh, water is up at a higher elevation. We see this in the mountains a lot. And basically the water is just coming out of the ground. Well, it's just because it has a, a, an area that it can uh, come out. So. Water's at higher elevation, it wants to come out, least path resistance, uh, makes sense.
Okay. The next one we'll talk about is an artesian well. And an artesian well is a well that, that water comes out of the ground. Uh, but the reason why it comes out of the ground is we've got pressure built up. We don't actually have to pump it. I think it's easiest to see what I'm talking about. Uh, and again, uh, I'll show you a video of it. But when, when we're not pumping it, the water just pushes up from the pressure from higher elevation. We call this an artesian formation. And basically what happens is we've got two impermeable rock layers sandwiched uh, in the middle uh, of a, a, a permeable rock layer. And, and water is flowing through the permeable rock layer. So uh, let me show you what that looks like. So this is what it looks like here. We've got, again, impermeable rock layer, impermeable rock layer, permeable rock layer. You've got pressure here. It's no different than the reason why water comes out of your out of uh, our water tower and goes to your house. Um, so pretty simple. Uh, the pressure builds up and it pushes out. Um, but what I'll do is I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, oh, I thought I had that on there. Um, one second. So, this will show you. Again, we've got uh, pressure. The water table's at a certain level. And what happens is, as you've got these two impermeable rock layers with the permeable one in between, what happens is gravity is pushing it out. As gravity pushes it out, uh, it wants to get to the natural level. As it does, gravity's pushing it down. So we've got a lot of pressure built up here. You put a, put a, uh, a well in, and basically it comes out. Um, pretty simple how that works uh, and again um, you've got natural artesian wells um, and, and you've got here here's a good example they just sunk this well here and the water is coming out naturally uh, again because their higher elevation is pushing the water out of the pipe this is an artesian well there's no pump on it um, pretty good example of of how the pressure from the surrounding ground is pushing water out of that well. Um, and it creates a lot of water. I mean, whatever the pressure release is what that is. Okay. Next one, cap rock. We've talked about cap rock before. It's a, it's a rock that is impermeable uh, and allows things to either create pressure or hold uh, mineral deposits or oil and natural gas, cap rock, impermeable rock layer. Artesian spring, obviously I just talked about artesian wells. Um, artesian spring would be just basically uh, uh, where water would come to the surface uh, because of a break in the cap rock, again, pushing water up to the surface. We see, um, you know, an oasis would be uh, an artesian spring type thing, uh, an oasis in the desert. Okay, um, hot springs. When we have regional rock have heat in it, um, whether it be to molten rock or, or maybe regional metamorphism, basically we create a hot spring. And hot springs uh, pretty much uh, are an area where the water warms up and um, it is pushed to the surface and we create uh, a hot water pool uh, this is not an uncommon thing uh, my favorite is uh, my favorite is like hot springs arkansas again this is uh this is water that is uh extremely hot it's coming out of the ground it's an artesian formation uh again but it's being pushed up there uh due to the heat from the ground so again we've got pressure we've got water coming out of the ground as a natural spring it's heated by the surrounding rock which is uh, through regional metamorphism obviously you have to have uh, you have to have uh, volcanic activity um, and so or hot 
hot, hot rock, uh, and th and that's what it is. My favorite though is uh, what I call hot tub monkeys, and so this will kind of give you an idea. For a long time, the Japanese people have enjoyed bathing in these hot springs in the mountains, but they were being watched, and soon the monkeys that live here decided to join them. But the people didn't want to share their baths, even with their relatives, so they decided to build another pool further up the valley just for the monkeys. The first monkeys that discovered the joys of a hot bar were a couple of youngsters way back in the 1960s. And not surprisingly, the others thought it was a great idea. Now several troops share this hot spring and it's turned into a kind of monkey health spa. I know how they feel. The heat is very relaxing. For those who do manage to stay awake, the pool is also a social hotspot where determined fingers complete the cleansing and relaxation treatment. The hot water may be lovely, but at a certain point they've got to get out and they do look very cold and bedraggled when they do. But fortunately they've got this thick undercoat which never actually gets wet and even the outside fur dries remarkably fast. Just like after any hot bath, they must glow with warmth for hours afterwards. Once these snow suits are fluffy again, the youngsters are ready to play some rather familiar winter games. Thickest fleece, it's really cold out here. And as with all youngsters, they just can't keep out of the pool for long. Clever macaques have managed to thrive no matter where they find themselves. And they've certainly made the most of having us as neighbours. Okay, so hot tub monkeys. Uh, I love them. Anyhow, so uh, the next thing I want to talk about is what's called travertine. Travertine is very famous in uh, places like Turkey. Uh, and basically it's a hot spring that comes to the ground but as it does we also see this in Yellowstone um, but uh, as it comes to the ground it 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 drops off or it deposits calcite in other words uh, the water evaporates and it leaves calcite, calcite uh, behind and so where we see this is like uh, in Right there. All right. So this is uh, 
this is this is travertine. And again, it's located like 260 kilometers southeast of Izmir, Pamukkale has been a popular health spa for thousands of years and continues to be amongst Turkey's most popular resorts today. Set on a plateau above the broad, fertile valley of a Meander River tributary, the resort boasts hot calcium-laden waters that burst from the earth at a temperature of 35 degrees Celsius. And again, this is hot. Cooling as they travel through the many pools and channels, the waters finally cascade down a steep hillside, depositing their gleaming white calcium as travertines, or calcium rock formations. These fanciful shapes of pure white rock have earned Pamukkale its Turkish name, which means cotton castle. The Romans valued the health-giving properties of these waters and came by the thousands to relax and recuperate. They built the classical city of Hierapolis among the hot springs to accommodate visitors. Many of those who came were in poor health and hoped to be restored. But the city's huge necropolis tells a different story. It's the largest ancient cemetery in Anatolia with some 1,200 graves. Among those buried here is the Apostle Philip, who was martyred at Hierapolis during the first century. Among Pamukkale's favorite sites is the sacred pool, littered with the drums of marble columns. This may have been the center of religious observances connected with the nearby Temple of Apollo. The 20,000 seat Roman theater of Hierapolis is decorated with fine reliefs, recently restored, showing events in the life of Emperor Septimius Severus. Okay, so good idea uh, of what travertine is again it's the calcium that's left behind the next thing I want to talk about is mud pots mud pots are basically uh, when we have mud that's uh, heavily laden or dissolved in water and basically it's again in a hot spring uh, and they're pretty pretty neat deal uh, I'll show you a mud pot here uh, that's travertine Here's a mud pot. Doesn't really give you a good idea, but uh, let me show you a mud pot. This is kind of pretty good here. And again, um, it's just like basically wet concrete, uh, and the water is boiling hot from the surrounding area, uh, the rock. And as it does, it just bubbles, and they call them mud pots. And uh, actually, kind of soothing to watch. Um, I'm sure uh, that uh, if people could like find a, a economic use for this, probably like mud masks or something. But uh, real, uh, real neat. Again, water is being heated by the surrounding rock. It's got dissolved mud in it, uh, and it's a mud pot. Again, we see these in Yellowstone, places that have volcanic activity, uh, pretty common, especially if there's high volume of water there. Uh, okay, next one, uh, next one we're going to go to is a geyser, not a geyser, a geyser. And you guys are pretty familiar with geysers, probably with Old Faithful in Yellowstone National Park. Um, and basically what happens is, uh, water comes into an area, uh, and as it does, uh, it gets heated by the volcanic rock that's around the outside of it. Here's a here's a geyser here, uh, ready to go, and as it heats up, um, the water comes in to a cavern system, if you will, or an area that's got highly permeable rock. Um, as it does, it starts to get hot creates pressure and a lot of people think wow it's the boiling water that that uh, 
it's the bubbles from the boiling water that that cause that to happen well in reality is once it releases it's the pressure release uh, that causes it to shoot up in the air and this animation shows the cold water flowing in it's heated by the surrounding rock uh, again this is all sealed with calcite here uh, because of the deposition from um, evaporating water and so as it does the water flows in creates pressure and again you'll see pressure here in a second um, as it's heated up it's creating pressure fills up and you have this little area that gets bubbles in it and as it fills up with bubbles the moment that it escapes it releases all that pressure really quickly and it creates uh, a geyser so we'll just watch this here and you can see it filling up and again this is superheated water it's this chamber right here that causes everything to happen right so now we've got this chamber here that's creating pressure creating pressure creating pressure as it does it wants to escape and when it does it pushes all the water out and and creates this geyser and again it's the releasing of the water releasing of that water pressure that causes that to happen and there it goes And just pushes all the water out and then it fills up again pretty regular uh, pretty regular here's a double eruption in uh, in Iceland Iceland has a lot of geysers uh, and you can see huge eruption right here uh, pretty good and again it's filling back up real quickly and it'll go again here there it goes Uh, Old Faithful. Here's Old Faithful. You're probably familiar with that. I watched a couple of guys one time. Uh, they were trying to trick everybody, and they brought out this this little wheel on top of a pedestal, and they were turning it, and they were trying to trick people to think that they were letting turning on and turning off Old Faithful. It was kind of funny. Um, but this is uh, the pressure coming out of the ground again. The water superheated by uh, the surrounding rock. And it's pushing it out, Old Faithful. And it can last for some time, actually. Very regular. You can set your clock by it. But as the rock type changes, then the then the uh, eruption will change too. Very, very, very uh, impressive. pretty cool I think uh, um, you know Yellowstone's one of our our nation's uh, treasures and it's just about done here so many people flock to see Old Faithful uh, you can't get as close to it as you used to uh, you used to be able to walk right up there but uh, it's that's scalding hot water so okay uh, the next thing I want to talk to you about is like thermal pools, right? So this is called Morning Glory out in Yellowstone. And this is actually bacteria, two different kinds. And so the ones that are blue um, actually uh, are able to tolerate hotter temperature. We call them thermophiles. And the, the yellow ones are um, a little bit more tolerant. Uh, they do not take as much heat. Uh, I shouldn't say they're tolerant. They're less tolerant. Uh, they can't take as much heat. So you see them on the outside. Yellow and blue make green. We have the, the mixing where some of them are able to survive. So here's another better image of Morning Glory. Again, pretty cool out in Yellowstone. Uh, let me see what else. 
Um, all right. Oh, I forgot to show you this one. This is a, a huge, huge geyser. All right. Um, let's see. So morning glare. Okay. Well, that's it. Uh, I really appreciate all you guys do. Thank you for paying attention. I hope you have a fabulous day and uh, take a chance and, and make someone's day better uh, because you were here. Thanks for everything and we'll talk to you later.